Hello, and welcome to Nerd Sanctum. Today, i got a cool topic planned for you guys. I'm going to be talking about binary. Now, I presume most people have a general understanding of what binary is. It's something like ones and zeros, and it has something to do with computers. Um, so today, I'm going to be going more in-depth of what exactly binary is, and what are its practical applications. Now, let's look at what is binary before, you know, computers got involved. Binary can be seen as another way of representing numerical data. Now, us as humans, we naturally develop the decimal or base 10 system because we have 10 fingers. But what that exactly means is imagine if any number can be represented as a series of digits where each digit is 0 to 9, okay? Now, if we take two numbers like 9 and 1, they're both one digit long, and we add them together, since 9 is the maximum, we round over and get 10, which is two digits long, right? Now, imagine binary is like decimal, but it's base 2. So it means instead of going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we just go 0, 1, and then we round over to the next place, right? So 0 is 0, 1 is 1, and if we want to represent 2 in binary, that would be represented as 1, 0, uh, and etc. Every time we need to round over, we simply add that extra digit on there. Now that we have an understanding of binary and how it's a different numerical system, let's look at why we're using binary in computers instead of decimal, right? Because if we're using decimal in our everyday lives and just for normal math, why wouldn't we just put that in computers? Why do we have to use binary and put that in computers, right? That's a completely logical question. Now, the reason for that is engineering limitations. Uh, there's two main factors here. One is transmitting data, and one is just storing data, and I'll cover both. If we wanted to send digital signals in a decimal format, we technically could, but it'd get really messy. Imagine, since we have you know a range of six volts and a range of nine numbers to cover, if we wanted to represent all those nine numbers, we need to break things up into you know, fractions of two-thirds. So imagine if we say, you know, zero is represented anything from zero to two-thirds of a volt, and one would be represented by two-thirds to four-thirds of a volt, right? Now, that gets a little messy, because imagine if they're too close together, right? What if there's some kind of signal jump, and that makes, you know, our computer think, oh, it's a two instead of a one, and that would just cause massive problems. That wouldn't be good. Um, so imagine binary, right? Basically how we say it is, you know, 0 to 3 volts is logic 0, and 5 volts to 6 volts is logic 1, and anything in between, you know, that 3 and 5, that's undetermined, that's an error, we don't like that, right? So there's a lot of security and, you know, room for error uh, with that system. Now if we move on to storing data, right? How are we storing data into computers and how is that, you know, why is binary a lot more useful than decimal? Now imagine we can represent uh, in a hard drive, right? When we store data on a hard drive, everything is magnetically stored. When we have electrons, right, uh, in that hard drive, basically we, you know, there's a magnetic spin on all these electrons and if they're, let's say, spinning upwards, we say, okay, logic one, binary one, or if they're spinning downwards, you know, uh, this way, we'd say, okay, well, that's logic zero or, or binary zero. But imagine, you know, that's simple up and down. That's really easy. But if we start getting into, you know, base 10, we say, okay, well, all these different directions, how do we work that out and how do we really determine the difference? And that gets really technical and difficult. So uh, that is just a way for us to simplify the hardware. So now that we get through the engineering limitations, let's look at logic and some of the cool things that we can actually do with binary. This is one aspect where computers kind of fail to follow up is a thing called fuzzy logic. Imagine if we say, you know, is someone tall? You know, some people can go, eh, you know, they're pretty tall, or yes, they're tall, or no, they're not tall. You know, that's a varying of opinion, right? That's what we call fuzzy logic, and computers aren't really good at that. But if we say something like, you know, if someone's at least six foot ten or taller, they're tall, right? Or if they're that or shorter, then they're not tall, right? Uh, that would be uh, one way we could break that into two different categories, which would be our binary, right? If we say, you know, if this condition is satisfied, it's true, 
binary one, or if it's not satisfied, then we say, okay, it's false, binary zero, right? Uh, so that's a good way we can break up all this different information into series of ones and zeros. So right? we say, this is true, this is false, this is true, this is true, this is false. We take all that data, then we can plug it into you know, whatever kind of program we're running our computer and then make those decisions from there. And then the computer can do all that processing for us. Um, so that's you know, one way we can really use the power of computers and binary. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of what exactly binary is and how it works. So now you can probably see how awesome it actually is and how it just makes our lives so much better. But anyways, I just want to wrap up saying, sorry I haven't uploaded in a super long time. Unfortunately, you know, I get busy with school and programming, but I definitely want to make more time for you guys and you know making cool videos and stuff. Um, so please, if you get any ideas, put them in the description. It really, really helped me out. Um, anyways, as always, uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good day.